Recently, Chris Wood mentioned he would not be surprised to see Sensex hit the 1 lakh mark. Morgan Stanley also released their forecast for India growth which shared similar optimism. We will examine why they are so confident with the India growth story in two sections. In the second section, we will see some amazing data which will be an eye opener. But first, the reason why Sensex or our equity market should continue to grow. The answer is GDP growth and asset inflation. GDP growth is the growth rate of our economy. So the return expectation is approximately inflation plus the GDP growth. If inflation is 6% and GDP growth is 6%, then the fund manager capability of generating an alpha, one can expect 12% plus return. A growth in GDP indicates that the portfolio companies are growing their profit, which means share prices will grow because there is a strong correlation between the profit increase of companies, the green line, and the share price increase, the blue line. In the short term, you can see prices trailing due to say bad news or negative sentiment. These are the times to buy more. We will see a few examples of very well run companies just as an illustration and not as a recommendation. We consider three names, TCS. In the last 10 years, net profits have gone up four times, that is 4x. Share prices have gone up by 5x, showing a strong correlation of share price increase and net profit growth in the long run. Asian Paints. Profits have gone up 4 times and share price has gone up 7 times. HDFC Bank. Profits have gone up 9 times and share price has gone up 5 times. Again showing strong correlation between net profit increase and stock price increase. The question is, why would companies continue to churn higher profit? Here are some very interesting projections by Morgan Stanley. By the end of the next decade, India's GDP will grow from 3 trillion now to 7.9 trillion dollars. Our per capita income will move from the current 2200 dollars to dollar 5200. Today, at 2200 per capita income, we are a poor country where a lot of people earn subsistence income. When our per capita income grows to $5,200, we will be a mid-income economy. We will move out of this poverty, lowering the difference between the poor and the rich. The income pyramid will swell, which means a lot of people will move from now lower middle class into the middle class. Market capitalization of Indian equity goes from $3.5 trillion to about $10 trillion. That's a very strong growth number. If we achieve that, India could be one of the best performing stock markets in the world. This is the research by Morgan Stanley. We saw China rising in the past decade. This decade, India is projected to be the third largest economy. As our per capita income grows from $2,500 per household, we will witness increased spending on lifestyle and discretionary choices. We will see exponential growth in sales of flats, two-wheelers, four-wheelers, consumer goods, ACs, TVs, kitchen appliances, on travel, holiday. Sales of all these will grow exponentially. This will have a ripple effect on the major sectors of the economy, such as banks, steel companies, infrastructure creators, airlines, hotels, tire industries. All the sectors will benefit. The companies making products or services will increase their share and profitability. And we know the share price will reflect this increased profits of companies. The size of our companies are still very small compared to global averages. If you see in retail, the world's biggest company is 28 times bigger than that of India's largest. Similarly in automobile, our biggest auto company is only 1 11th of the global biggest which shows the headroom for growth for Indian companies. Largest tire company in India is still a mid-cap company. The largest consumer durable company is also a mid-cap company. This shows the tremendous scope for growth. When these companies go on to become large cap, imagine the growth opportunity they provide in the years to come. When Sequoia Capital Head was asked how the VC firm was so successful, he said, not growth or brains or insights, the ability to stick around for a long time without wiping out or giving up 
made the big difference.